Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me this Thursday morning and uh, middle of April. Uh, great rainy morning. The sun's kind of peeking its head out. My bride and I, we really needed the rain. We were um, actually working out in the yard and uh, did some weed and feed, you know, all that goofy stuff that you do uh, when you have first world problems like dandelions. Imagine that. Hey, uh, this morning, it's interesting. I, uh, I've i been busier than I expected. I, I One of the things that I do traditionally during the week is I'll go and meet with um, one of my buds uh, who has been part of my accountability for, wow, going on uh, three years now, I think. And um, and so we'll meet and, 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 you know, talk about things that are going on in life and talk about the word and, and some of that stuff. And so I did that this morning. And interesting... Uh, Lee enough, we tend to talk a little longer than normal, and I did not have my normal time uh, of preparation uh, for this morning. So what I thought I would do is that I would actually um, kind of walk you guys through what I do in preparing uh, to share uh, sermons with with people or to talk about the text that we're in. Um, and so this morning might be a little bit different. Um, I will, uh, I'll do what I can in, in the text and hopefully as we wrestle with this, uh, the Lord will really, um, encourage you and, and hopefully, uh, uh, maybe spark or, or, or just tweak your heart a little bit to cause you to desire to be in the words more. So, um, cause typically in my process during the week, I'll spend, um, a, a good portion of a week when I'm preparing a sermon, wrestling with the text, wrestling with, you know, how does it apply to my life? What is the application and how do I address this? So good morning, everybody. It is great to see you guys. Thanks for joining us today. I, um, I'm going to try not to say good morning all throughout the, the process because I realize that it can be a little distracting and I happen to be one of those personalities like squirrel, and I'm gone. And so what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to say good morning to everybody and know that I love you. And I'm rec- I see you, sh- you jumping in and it's great to have you. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that part of today will be a, an encouragement to you um, to say you can do this as well. This isn't, this isn't something that, that is particularly, um, it doesn't require a Bible degree to engage the Word of God and to draw something meaningful out of it for yourself on a regular basis. Um, in fact, the privilege that I have of being set aside to study the word, to prepare it on a Sunday, um, that's a, that's, it is a gift. I feel like it's a special privilege um, that God has allowed me to do. And by his grace, uh, he shows up every single time that I prepare to teach or that I'm preparing to share with you what God's teaching me. Um, and, and it's interesting, uh, we were, I was actually talking uh, with my accountability partner this morning that there's a confidence that I have now in presenting biblical text, not because I feel like I have um, something particularly special to offer or I've mastered the text or um, I have mastered the presentation, but I'm confident that God's going to show up every single time because um, I, I really do come to the Word of God in prayer and in dependence on God showing up to make something uh, supernatural happen because I know it's not me. And I know that when something good comes from our time in the word of God, that it's him. And so I have great confidence that the Lord's going to show up and and do that today. So here's what you're going to need this morning to join me and to follow along. You're going to need a Bible. I would encourage you, uh, I don't know if you have a concordance or not, but if you have a Bible, uh, sp- uh, particularly one that um, that maybe has some study notes or at least has some cross references in it, it will be helpful um, because that's a lot of what I do when I first start in my, in my text is I'll take a Bible like this. I'm going to show it to you right here. I'm going to take a Bible like this. And this is my New American Standard Bible. And you will see right in here that it's got study notes down below. And not all of them do. Um, One of my uh, other texts that I use is my ESV. This is my my reading Bible that I use on Sunday. And you know why? Because it's got larger print. And so it's easier for me to read. But even in this text, um, I I can't really show it to you in this setting. But if you jump in here, you'll find letters next to the text. And you can go down below. And in this really super fine print, which is ridiculous, um, you can actually find cross-references. And so one of the things that I do as I'm preparing a text is I engage it 
I'll read through the text and then I'll go back and I'll begin to just grab particular areas that that either are uh, challenging to me or they're speaking to my heart where I'm like, yes, that is so accurate. And we'll look at that, a couple of those spots this morning and we're going we're gonna to actually follow or what I want to call chase the text, if you will, where we're going to read some of those texts and then we're going to exercise a pursuit or a chasing of that text and go find where we see that listed at other places, how God's using that in other places, and it'll help us to interpret the, the, the biblical text and how we should be applying that. Now, there's other, several other options and things that we need to consider. So, let's begin. And in, in this particular text, Psalm 18, we're going to, because of the study Bible that I have, we actually have some context about who it is that's writing it and when he's writing it. So, the very beginning part of the text says this, For the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and he said. So in the very beginning of this text, we actually see that this is a psalm of David, and it was written around a time when David had been, uh, uh, actually, he had been rescued from or delivered from the hand of his all of his enemies and from Saul. So we know that this is back early in his uh, probably pre-king um, rule or or right at the very, very beginning of this as, as King Saul um, was being, uh, uh, the threat of King Saul was being removed and his enemies, and he was finding a time of peace after coming out of a time of great persecution and, and great tribulation. Where I mean, it, you guys, I don't know that we can comprehend how difficult this persecution had to be because he had people pursuing him to kill him. And, and, and it, he was falsely accused of, of being a traitor to the, to the throne. And, and his father-in-law at that time, his father-in-law, if you will, was trying to have him killed, right? Pretty significant, pretty serious accusations. His best friend's dad even. What a, what a profound, difficult uh, a, a time that that would have been for him to be in that scenario and to be pursued and persecuted in such a way. So that's how I would start out the text. Now I know what David's writing. I know when he's writing this or an approximate idea. I kind of have the idea around what um, is, is the reason or the motivation behind why he's writing. So let's begin in Psalm 18, verse 1. He says this, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Now, if we take into context, right, who he's writing to, when he's writing this, we have a little bit more understanding of why he's saying what he's saying. Do you, do you see what he's calling God? He says, you're my strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Um, um, who I'm, who I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, the stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. So we get to watch him. He's worshiping God. He's extolling God and who he is, what, what he's done for him, what he sees him as. And it's interesting, right? Because if we, if we understand what he's come out of, now how he sees God in the character and when what he's what he's aligning his praise to God, it's in reflection of what he's delivered him from. And so part of what we have to wrestle with is the fact that David is coming out of a very difficult time and the results of that are praise. Praise in who God is. And, and the character of God and the things that he's watched him do. Now, we know from other Psalms, right? We've read other texts where he's crying out to the Lord saying, when are you going to save me? How long am I going to be forgotten? How long am I going to be left in this case, in, in this particular scenario and in and, and, and this life circumstance? So we know that David's experiencing all of the emotions and, and um, up and down days. But at this particular time, in this particular psalm, he's returning back to the character of God, extolling him for rescuing him and praising him. This, this is going to be very, very important in the context of the remainder of his life and how he returns to the praise of God and the exaltation of God. Let's continue. We, we're not going to have time to do all of this. And like I said, part of what I would do in a typical um, preparation process is I'd be writing down these notes, blocking them in with different texts going, okay, wow, this is amazing. That really jumped out to me. That That's incredible. Look at how he's praising God right now. 
Um, and then I would walk away from that and I would continue down the text and keep building in, in, with these blocks. And in just a minute, like I said, we're gonna chase the text a little bit and we're gonna focus in on, on one particular area because when I read the text last night, God really got a hold of my heart in one area and I'm gonna, I'm gonna expose that to you um, in, in my heart in this area and what God grabbed me. And then I'm gonna show you how I would pursue that and, and how I wrestle with that to apply it to my own heart and to my own life. Um, so let's continue. Verse four of Psalm 18. Now, we may not get all the way through Psalm 18 today because there's 55 verses. I just don't know that I'll make it, but we're, we're going to, we'll see where we get. Uh, the cords of death encompassed me and the, to uh, the torrents of ungodliness terrified me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he cried and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry for help before him, uh, before him came into his ears. So in verses four to six, David's going back and he's pointing us back to what he came out of. He's pointing us back to the condition that he was in before he saw God redeem him and before he was rescued, right? And so now we, we actually get to see this and go, okay, wow, David was in real trouble. Um, this praise, this ex, extol, um, uh, exaltation of God, th this extolling his wonders, calling him fortress and rock and deliverer and, and uh, you know, horn of salvation, the shield, giving him all of these adorations um, are, are not coming from a person who's just doing it um, uh, theoretically. He, he describes in verses four, five, and six how desperate he was, the depth of his um, entanglement, the depth of his despair, and his uh, the, the life circumstances. So it, it helps us to kind of get a hold of David's heart in this, and maybe why he's so, he's so um, uh, uh, jubilant and, and, and um, boastful in his view of God. He, he's extolling God. It, it's a very, very... Um, yeah, look at this. It's, it's kind of got that feel to it. Um, and so let's continue. Let's look at ver verse seven. We'll continue on. And, and this is where this is where we're going to start chasing the text a little bit. And this is where God really grabbed my heart, even last night and again this morning as I, as I opened the text. And, and by the way, I want to encourage you, if you're studying to share the text with somebody, if you're studying it even to uh, address your own heart issues and for God to get a hold of you, I really want to encourage you, take a passage of scripture and read it multiple times. It's, it's amazing how much we gain from the text when we reread a passage over um, more than once. And especially, I mean, if you can if you can allocate the time to read it two or three or four times, you will find that God will start really uh, uh, penetrating your heart and carving space out um, for you to hear from him and to be impacted by the text. So, uh, but in verse seven, let's jump into verse seven right here. The text says this, uh, Psalm 18, verse 7, Then the earth shook and quaked, and the found, uh, foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. With thick darkness under his feet, he rode upon a cherubim and flew, and he spread upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds, of the sky from the brightness before him passed away his thick clouds hailstorms and coals of fire the lord also thundered in the heavens and the most high uttered his voice hailstones and coals of fire he sent out his arrows and scattered them and lightning flashed in abundance and routed them then the channels of water appeared and the fountains of the world were laid bare at your rebuke o lord at the blast of your breath your nostrils Wow. Oh, so when you read that, doesn't at some level, as we think about who God is, it, it causes me to stop and, and go, wow. Look at what David said. What is David saying about this God and his response to David's life and David's threats and, and the stuff that's in here. He, he talks about thunder and he talks about him bringing justice and he talks about hailstones and, and, and coal fire and, and the earth shaking and lightning flashing in abundance um, and, and, and the earth, all, all of this magnificent stuff. And w what I do when I'm studying and preparing for, for a sermon, I, I look at that and I'm like, okay, that looks like the presence of God to me. And why do I think that? Well, because there's other texts that speak to that. In fact, if you have your Bible with cross-references, 
Go back to verse 7, and as you look at verse 7 and you get to the word earth, maybe look at your Bible and see if there's a letter next to that. And um, it, it would be awesome if some of you actually found that letter. Just let me know that, that your Bible has cross-references. Throw it, throw it up there. What text are you guys seeing in your cross-reference Bibles? And if you take that letter and, you, and then you go down into your cross-reference section, you'll find the verse, the chapter and the verse in that letter. And what's the Bible verse that's attached to that letter? Now, in mine, chapter 17, I'm going to go down here to verse 7. Actually, it's chapter 18. And I go down and I find verse 7. There's verse 7. And the word of the Lord came. And I see in here that there's several references. And, and there's several psalm references, in fact, in that text. And so what do we look at? Well, we can go down and, and look at several of those different passages. One of them is Judges uh, chapter 5, verse 4. So what I would do is I would write that verse down. Um, there's also Psalm 68, 7. Uh, those are the two, those are the two passages that it gives me for that particular verse. So what I would typically do is I would go and find that verse. So let's go look at Judges chapter five, verse four. All right. And so we're turning in our Bibles to Judges chapter five, verse four. I hope you guys are doing that. Come on, flip open your Bibles. It'll be all right. I promise. May not. God might convict us and then we may have to change how we live. So Judges, this is the Song of Deborah, right? And you can see that in the title of chapter 5, Psalm or uh, Judges chapter 5, verse 4. And it says this, The Lord went out, uh, Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, even Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. So here we have this, this picture in this particular cross-reference that talks about God going out and the earth shaking and the earth, uh, th this, this process of water dropping and the earth quaking and, and the earth trembling. So is that the only place that we see that? No, we actually see that in other spots, right? Think about um, it, what I would do in this process. I'd say, where else have I heard? Where else, in what other texts do I see this applied? Well, I go back to Acts, right? So when when um, when the the disciples are praying for God to give them boldness, um, it, they they actually experience God the, the earth shaking. I, I can't remember what reference that is. Hmm. How do I find that reference now? This is something that I do. You guys don't have to do this. If I'm really wrestling with this and I don't find the cross-reference that I want, this is going to sound really, really spiritual. So don't tell anybody. Please do not give out my secret here on this because it would really mess us up. All right? I mean, people would, would start doing this on their own and it would be horrible. Um, I actually grab out my computer and I go to Google, which is hilarious because if they don't like what we're doing as Christians, but I'm... Googling stuff on the Bible so I can preach. I just find that kind of biblical justice in a way. So, um, so I'll type in biblical, uh, biblical passages of earth shaking. That simple. And it comes up with Bible verses about God shaking the earth. You can you can jump in there, click on that. And all of a sudden, there, hey, look, there's Judges 5-4. It's right there. There's Psalm 68-8. It's got all of them. And, and it may not have all of them, but there are times where they'll have many of them sitting right here in front of you. And you can just type that kind of stuff in. You can jump in there and do some of your own research and, and begin to track these verses and, and run them down um, very, very simply. So Acts chapter 4, verse 31, it's right there. See? This is super, super easy, and you guys can do this. We can all do this. Um, yes, I have tools on my computer. I have, I, I have some pretty extensive tools that I'll actually get in and start looking at the words and how the words are working and, and all of that stuff. But to track down what God's saying and track down what God's doing and look for application and how, how we would apply this, you can do that by simply typing it into Google. Or you can look that up in the back of your Bible. If your Bible has a dictionary in the back, you can look up earthquake or trembled, and it'll give you other cross-references that will take you to this spot. I would 
anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now, getting into too many different things. We'll stay focused on this morning. So in Acts chapter 4, the believers pray for boldness, right? And verse 31 says, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Okay, so now we have an Old Testament reference to God showing up and the earth shaking and, and thunder and lightning and all of that stuff happening. We have a New Testament reference. Actually, there's several New Testament references where the earth shakes when God is present. And we have one last one, which I, I think is, a, is, is just a monumental one, um, because it's, it's actually, uh, it's when Moses is on Mount Sinai, and the people of Israel are, are there, and, um, and they're watching what's happening uh, in this process of, of Moses and um, dealing with God and, and, and all of this stuff. And now I've got to find, because I had it. And then I switched, I, I changed, uh, ha, ha. I actually lost my reference. And just so you guys know, this happens on a regular basis. That's why I've got to write this stuff down so that I don't forget, um, so that I don't forget where I'm at and what chapter I'm supposed to be on. And I'm almost there, give me just a second. This is actually what it's like. Just so you guys know. All right. And so, um, I told you that I was going to walk you guys through the process that I go through, right? This is exactly what I do. And so when I get stuck on something and I'm like, oh, crud, I forgot what I was doing trying to find this thing. I'll jump into one of my computer programs and I'll be like, okay, I need to find this stuff. And it'll pop right up and um, or I'll grab my concordance and I'll look up a specific word, something that I want to see on this in this particular passage and, and I'll grab a hold of it. So here we go. Um, It is in Exodus chapter 19. That's where it at. And, and the, the passage is, is um, Exodus chapter 19, verse 18, starts out like this. Now, Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently when the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and God answered him with thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top, and Moses went up. And then he, he, he sends him back to warn the people to set boundaries, to stay off of this place, don't come up here because the Lord is here. But so, when we, when we look at all this stuff, what do we see? Well, we, we see that in the presence of God, there's this thunderous, powerful, uh, incredible response by the physical earth that looks like thunder and lightning and shaking and there's smoke and there's fire. There's this incredible response. Um, even to the spot, even to the place where in our Psalm, um, in Psalm 18, David speaks and it almost looks like he's using language out of Job, right? Um, some of this, some of the language that we see in this, I, I love part of the text because in verse eighteen or verse fifteen of, of Psalm eighteen, he says, "Then the channels of waters appeared, and the fountains of the world were laid, or the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, and the blast of of the breath of your nostrils." He, he gives this. He talks about the foundation, the channels of the waters, and the foundations. There's almost it, it almost appears like he's he's talking even about stuff like the, that happened during the flood or things that that job talked about in or that god challenged job in the last part of 38 39 and 40 and so as i'm preparing the text i start running and grabbing those pieces and pull them in and say okay so is this who god is does this give us a picture of this God that David's talking about? And I think it does. As you start looking at how the earth and how people respond to God when he shows up, we see thunder and lightning and the earth shaking. And we see that kind of power, that kind of expression in both the Old and the New Testament. 
And so there is, that is the response. Yeah, Gary Baker, awesome. Acts 16, that's another one of the cross-references that ex, that talks about, I believe, isn't that the one where Paul is, uh, Paul's in prison, I think, and the gates are shaken and uh, the whole earth shakes and the gates all pop open and, and I believe they stay put. I can't remember. Um, anyway, Acts 16, 26, check it out, make sure I'm correct on that. Um, but that's how I actually go through and begin to wrestle with the text to say, okay, God, so what are you trying to teach me through this process? What did David know about God that I need to learn from? And so I'm just going to stop there. We're only going to make it through verse 15 today in Psalm 18. But imagine that, imagine the, the, this God that David's talking about. This God that, that David has um, this relationship with and a covenant with that our Messiah, Jesus, it, it comes through the Davidic covenant down the road into the New Testament. And that's the God that David is wrestling with. And that's what I'm wrestling with in my own heart in this process. Is that the God that I see? Is that the God that I know? Is that how I respond to God? Do I see him as my shield? Do I see him as my fortress? Do I recognize him as my salvation? And in that, do I see him as that creator God who when he shows up, when he speaks, when he engages his creation, the earth shakes, lightning, thunder, fire, um, hailstones, um, the foundations of the earth being shaken and moved. Do I really recognize him as that God? that creator, that sovereign, all-powerful, all-knowing, makes the earth tremble God. Makes you kind of think, doesn't it? And so that's the process. That's what I would start wrestling with then if I were to be prepared to share this with you is how do I view God? Is that how I see him? Is that the God of the Bible? Or, or do, and then maybe one of the illustrations I might grab as I'm thinking about it is, or, or do I, do I associate God to the, you know, um, how many of you guys have seen, uh, Evan Almighty or, 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 um, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember where, where, where God is, is, you know, portrayed in a movie. I wonder sometimes as I wrestle with this text, I look at my own heart and I'm thinking, well, no, that's not who I think God is. And yet if I really evaluate my life and how I live, I would have to be honest to say, actually, that is, I do look at God as the Hollywood Jesus or the Hollywood God, because I don't, I don't really revere him. I don't really fear him, even though David talks about him in such magnificent and profound, earth-shattering language and, and, and descriptions. We see that about him in, in Exodus when Moses engages with him. We see him shaking the, the, the earth in, in violent earthquake-style um, um, expressions of that when he shows up for his people in the New Testament. I, I don't... I, so, and that's, that's what I'm wrestling with. That's how I would engage this text is to say, God, do I see you that way? Do I know you that way? Is this what you're teaching us? Is this, is this part of what you're trying to show us? Is that when we're in difficulties, when we're experiencing hardship, or when we someday as a church truly experience persecution, because it becomes illegal and, they're, and punishable to be a Christian in this country, which again, that's, I, I'm, my prayer is that we don't see that. I, I hope that we don't see that. But I'm truly trying to prepare my heart that that could be where we go because we see it in almost every other nation, every other country, and not every one of them, I know that, but many of them, Christians die for their faith. And so I, I, I'm wrestling with that into my own heart to say, am I aware of God in the same way? Do I, do I know him in that way? Do I trust him in that way? Is this the God that I know? Or have I somehow accepted or, or reinterpreted who God really is and therefore maybe I don't know him the way David does? And then the question that would hit me as I'm wrestling with this and I would have to start thinking about is would I have to deal with suffering? Would I have to experience persecution to understand God in this way? 
Is that a minute? Is that a requirement? And that would take me on a whole nother journey. I would then have to, I would start chasing the text through that to look at what Paul says and what Jesus says about persecution, to look at different characters in the Old Testament and, and what they experienced in persecution and how God showed up for them. You see how this would, how this would just begin to explode and it just, it, it snowballs, if you will, into more and more pieces and it grows and grows um, and it becomes all consuming. Um, it, at least for me during the week, that that's part of the wrestling with the text for me that's so wonderful and such a privilege. So I want to encourage you tomorrow. This is my challenge for you guys. We're almost out of time. I want to encourage you guys tomorrow. Take the, take, start at, at verse, uh, where, where'd we end today in Psalms? Let's look, let's look back so I can give you an actual Psalm verse, a specific verse. I want you to jump in at verse 16 and just take verses 16 through 20. Use your cross-reference passages. Read that several times. In fact, maybe read all of verse, uh, maybe read all of Psalm 18, 1 through 19. And start wrestling with that text and ask these questions. Do I know God this way? What's David trying to teach us? What does David know about this God that I don't know? How did he get there? And then grab a couple of those cross-references in your Bible and go and look what the text says. Look and see where other passages use that particular idea or talk about God in such a way and what the context of those people's lives were and then ask the question, how does this apply to me today? I really want to challenge you to take that time tomorrow. Don't, don't not show up at 10 o'clock or whatever time it is that you get time to do this. Don't not show up at that, which is a double negative, so do show up. Even if I'm not there, even if we're not on video together, please show up, take this time, make the commitment to engage the word of God and watch what he does and watch how he changes your heart when you begin to dig, when you begin to extract these and wrestle with this text and ask these questions. I believe God will meet you there and he will do exceedingly wonderful things in our hearts when we engage the word and we wrestle with the text and we ask these questions. May God bless you today as you pursue him and as you chase the text yourselves. Please engage with him. Please open his word and dig in and let God speak to you. Get me out of the way and let God talk to your heart. Be in his word, wrestle with the text, use the tools you have and seek him first. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll be uh, live streaming from the church, but you can find us on all of our, all of our app, webpage, Facebook, Vimeo, wherever we're at. God bless you. Love you. See you soon. Bye.